Listen, before we delve into post-trade deadline talk, we welcome Rich Sutter to the program uh, from Southern Alberta. Hey, Rich, do you, or are you? Yeah, you're at your desk in Southern Alberta. Welcome back to the program. I've got to ask you about John Tortorella, because I believe we talked about this, and I said if you were going into the Hall of Fame, which you should, it would be as a flyer. You're a flyer guy. So what are your thoughts on John Tortorella and his $50,000 suspension for his actions the other night? Well, I was actually lying to you from watching him for the last 20 minutes. So <laughs> I, 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 okay. think, I think it was awesome. Um, yeah, he was pissed off. I think what kind of sparked that was obviously their start of the game. Um, and maybe probably more honestly, coaches have a way of doing things. Uh, sometimes showing their support for their guys in different ways. And sometimes it's ripping through the media or ripping through the officials. And I think it was a perfect time for him to, to probably do that. And I'm sure there were some habits creeping into the locker room. And uh, if, if people pay attention to things that go on close with clubs that, you know, sometimes habits and things are the ways of how they start games and their practice habits prior probably led to some of this. And he was showing his way of blowing off the steam, not directly on the guys. And when some of those calls were made, quite frankly, I was trying to watch parts of that game. And I had a tough time kind of disagreeing with what he was seeing um, and how he felt about it. And if that was his way of blowing off steam to, to uh, probably protect his players from doing it, he did it. Um, it was probably more of a kind of a motivational thing to the group too. And also that uh, it's a wake up time. Probably as twice well, as guys. Uh, he will look at the mirror. He will look in the mirror first, Rod, and look at himself when the team starts to struggle. And what what am I doing wrong? Where I need to be better? And and if this was a bit of a wake up call, uh, fifty thousand dollars, so be it. Like Dan Hilferty, the president of the team, said uh, he didn't have a problem with it. Like like uh, Moose said, he probably didn't think it was going to be quite fifty thousand dollars. But uh, Flyers have got lots of money, <laughs> and so they'll stroke the check. And they got good coaches there to help yeah. out for, for a couple of games. Let's let let's let well, Thompson run the bench. Oh, yeah. What, the medicine hat tiger, great. Well, they came in a sunrise to beat the Panthers the other night and looked real good doing it. But I guess if I yeah. was asking you, yeah. do you like John Tortorella or not, yes or no, you're voting yes. It was one of my dear friends. Um, I think the one thing that people get a real uh, missed understanding of what, what John and who John is is First and foremost, John is a great human being and cares deeply about people and their families. Um, I've seen him do that and interact with many players from my, our time together in Columbus. Uh, obviously, there's always one or two uh, guys that have a problem with it. Um, hey, you know, we this this uh, NHL thing stands for just not the National Hockey League. It stands for a lot of times, and if you go through internal email on every given day that over 32 teams it also stands for the never happy league because there's always one or two guys that have something to, that's got to be for a complaint about something and uh, uh you know that's how this this league works now and and how these guys as players operate i'd say 99 percent was that some days they can't even be looked at sideways because they think their feelings are being hurt so um it's a different league uh john has learned to adjust to it um probably in better ways than probably 99% of the other coaches have, and that's why he is who he is today. Ah, well said, and he needs supporters like you. Like I said, I've never met him. I'm a nice guy too, but I know I can't go yelling at people. I get shit for it all the time. I don't know why he can, but anyways. <laughs> exactly. Now, to the trade deadline. It's, it's ridiculous to say who's a winner or a loser now. The winner will be the one that wins the Stanley Cup, correct? Well, I guess so. I mean, I, I mean, it's kind of funny. The last five, six years, as hockey people, um, everyone gets excited about this time of year, about the stretch run, and, and now teams are slotting in, and, and who's going to finish where. But you look at you look at the league this year. Uh, I was with a group of 25 NHLers the last three days, four days, and uh, the conversation was like, oh, my God, like how teams tried to load up. And how wide open it is this year, and like, I mean, you're looking at at least five or six teams in the West alone uh, that can that can win it. it. The sad thing about it is that so many teams have got to play each other right out of the hopper in the first round, so that's going to suck um, from a, from a fan and a TV viewer standpoint because 
we're going to lose some really good teams within the first uh, seven to ten days. And but I guess that's what makes hockey good, right? Um, hopefully there could be a different format to how you could make the playoffs work to see some of these teams staying longer. But at the end of the day, if, if there's teams falling by the wayside, there's still going to be some very good teams left. Um, I'm talking about the East. I'm just talking about the West alone. I guess that's why they say round one is always the best. I don't, I don't know. But whose moves do you like the most? You know, I, I really like what Vegas did, you know, seemingly right at the 3 o'clock deadline. Um, obviously bringing Noah Hannafin a day or two earlier. And then, and, then, and then the big trade for Thomas Hurdle, who will be ready to go. Um, hey, this guy, this guy is a horse. He's a big, massive man that can play the game. He's not really quick, but he's very smart. He's very good with the puck. Um, he can be a difference maker for that group. And uh, that makes you wonder about where things are going to line up come springtime with that group. You know, what's going to happen with Chandler Stevenson? What's going to happen with some of the other guys? Uh, because it, they've got some serious cap issues that they're going to have to address. But Kelly seems to be smarter than everyone else, so he'll figure it out. Um, and so you look, you look at them, what they've done, I think it was terrific. But you look at the little smaller pieces that even Colorado made. They made four moves, but every, every, every move they made was meant to help the bottom six part of their group up front. Um, and I thought they slotted those guys in really well. Well, three of the four, then the middle style will be a terrific, I think, second line guy. He was a real good player for Buffalo. Um, but Buffalo's got a lot of real good young guys coming that are knocking on the door that need a chance. And um, they will surround themselves with some, probably some good veterans this summer if they're smart uh, to make that team take a real legitimate step next year. But, you know, you look at, you look, you know, even Calgary, the, the little pieces at the end with Henrique and, and Carrick, I mean, those, those are bottom six pieces that they're good players, they're good leaders, uh, they know how to play in the trenches, they play in tough games, and when you look at Edmonton, uh, you know, if you're going to win four series, is not 27 and, and or 97 and 29 aren't going to win it by themselves, so you're going to need legit help. These guys could help. Uh, you look at Winnipeg, you know, bringing Tyler and Tyler Toffoli at the end. I'm a huge fan of Tyler Toffoli and, and what a difference he's going to make to that top six group. And you're trying to look what Dallas did. I mean, so like, you can go on and on and we can have a great conversation about how these teams really loaded up. Um, and they're going to be hard to beat, but the sad thing about it for as a hockey fan, like I said, some of these teams are going to have to play each other right out of the hopper. More sad for them, because some are going to go down. The hockey is going to be fantastic. Rich, we're out of time here now, but let's do it uh, again soon and do it more, all right? You bet. Thanks, Rod. Enjoy Florida. Thank you, sir. 13-year NHL veteran Rich Sutter, which I feel like we just scratched the surface on that.